No. No. That one word, it can change your life. And yet, there are so many of us today who don't know how to use that word. Who don't use that word at all. Instead, we end up saying yes, when really what we want to say is no. So, why do we do that? Hi, I'm Harleen Baga. I'm a multidisciplinary psychotherapist and a self-awareness based transformation coach. I am the founder of Soul Therapy with Harleen Baga. Today I'll try to break down the why into three easy buckets for you to understand and for you to think about. Bucket 1. Society. Upbringing. Value system. We are taught from such a young age that when you love someone, when you care for someone, when you uh, are affectionate about someone, you show affection, you show love by giving. Giving is associated with love. The act of giving is, is associated with sacrifice. And somehow, in a very twisted way, sacrifice is associated with being a good person. So somewhere, our society and our upbringing has told us that when you love someone, when you care for someone, when you respect someone, uh, and in your relationships, intimate or otherwise, friends, relatives, family, when there is love, when there is care, or to show that you care and to show that you love, it is okay to sacrifice and compromise on what really you want just so that the other person is happy. So we are taught to put someone else's happiness before us. We are taught to put someone else's needs before us and that putting someone else's needs makes you a better person. It means that you are someone who's compassionate, someone who's great, someone who's able uh, to give love to those around. Bucket two, confrontation or the fear of it, the fear of conflict. Somewhere we are afraid to rock the boat. It is easier to say yes and go with the flow and let that moment or that thing just pass rather than say no and stand up. You see that so many times in around us, in families, in relationship, in friends, right? When someone is asking something, you say, Thikina, chalta hai. let's just say yes. How does it matter? How it matters, we will get to in some time in the later part of this video. But for now, think about the second bucket. The need to avoid conflict or the need to avoid confrontation or the need to go with the flow and to choose peace, which you think is choosing peace, which you think is really uh, beneficial in the long term, is the reason why you say yes instead of saying no. While you think about that, let's move to bucket three. Bucket three is social image. It means that your image and your vision of yourself is so important that you don't want to be that one person who's going against the grain. You don't want to be that one person who is the party pooper. You don't want to be that one person who's standing up in a group or amongst your friends and telling them and telling yourself that, hey, let's not do it because it's actually the right thing to do. So let's not do it for the time being. The need to conform to a society, the need to get accepted, the need to not be an outcast outweighs your ability to be authentic to yourself and instead you choose to say no, to get accepted, to have friends, to be popular. Now just take a few seconds to think about which of these buckets have you been guilty of. What are the moments and times when you have said yes and the heat of moment you guys want to get intimate? You say no. 
He begs, pleads, implores, gives you uh, reasons and makes you feel guilty that you don't love him enough, you don't care for him, uh, makes you swear by your care for him, your commitment for that relationship, the love and the care that you have for each other. He makes you feel guilty that really his happiness doesn't matter to you and you are being uh, stuck up over nothing really because when you guys are so much in love and really you are committed to each other, so on and so forth. I'm just trying to draw a picture, a picture that is open to your imagination. The point is when someone is using emotions or doing emotional blackmail to get to do something that you don't want to do, what do you do? Ideally, you say no. But unfortunately, many, many people in relationships end up saying yes. And once you break that ice, you cross that boundary, then the discussion changes. Then the discussion becomes that you've already done it, now why stop? Why even bother? The boundaries don't hold. So the value of no is lost. And you in that guilt end up giving in again and again. Because now you're defending something else. Because now your fear is of being not true to yourself or not being accepted or just the guilt of having already given in once. Second example, sitting with a group of friends and they start bad mouthing someone, you know, they're talking ill about somebody. You know what they're doing, what they're talking is not right. You don't necessarily agree with what they're saying. And somehow in the conversation, just because you are on the table and you know, you are sitting there to just be accepted or whatever, they ask you specifically, hey, don't you agree? That, that, that woman is so clumsy. I mean, she's so silly. Who, I mean, what does she think she is? In this part of the moment, you say, yeah, she is so dumb. That boundary gets crossed. And without wanting to, you become a part of a group, part of a conversation, part of a culture, part of an ethic system where you are doing something that you don't feel is right. It's all about what your moral system is. It's not about what the world thinks is right or wrong. That's not the discussion here. It's about what is right for you. It's about going against what you believe in. Because you're in such a hurry or you are so uh, overwhelmed and taken over by those emotions of living in that imaginary world that you have forgotten your reality and all because you could not say no to yourself and hold yourself accountable and tell yourself to get out of that world which is not true to you. Let's take another example. What about friendship that turns into romance? You have a friend who's very close to you, maybe a best friend even, and he or she comes and tells you, you know what, I love you. In the spur of the moment, maybe, right? In order to not hurt that person's feelings, in order to protect your relationship, in order to uh, protect what you guys have going, you will say yes. When really what you wanted to say no. Imagine your future having to regret for the rest of your life, a decision that you took in the spur of the moment. So what you have done, my friend, is actually by taking that decision you thought you were taking to protect your friendship, what you have actually done is ruined your friendship. And you probably ruined it for life. You're a homemaker or you're working, doesn't matter. But the point here is that you're unwell, okay? And come meal time husband and kids demand hey you know give us dinner when you're not well when you know you need to rest 
how many how many of you actually get up and go ahead and serve food because in your head the way you've been brought up is it is okay if i don't do it who else is going to do it if i don't put on the food on the table who else is going to do it it is my job i am the mother i am the wife i am the home maker it is my duty and my responsibility to take care of my family and love my family really you think that the entire responsibility rests on your head but if you are unwell it is okay for you to say no your husband is sitting down on a couch and just watching tv you can't tell him hey honey i am unwell i'm feeling tired can you serve dinner today what do you think will happen if you say that maybe a discussion or conversation once or twice but eventually a boundary is set to respect you to respect your needs to respect your pain is that not more important why is it that we choose and we think that it is okay to give it is okay to keep sacrificing why is it so difficult to say no when really that one no can change your entire life and if you're still not convinced about the importance of saying no let me quickly run uh, by three repercussions that i think is important for you to just think about about how it affects you and your life and your future when you choose to say yes when really what you what you want to do is say no first thing you get caught in loop you get caught in a cycle of things that you don't want to do and you get caught in a situation because the other person thinks you're okay with it and then you can't get out of it because the other person believes that you're fine and your own guilt of having done that once forces you kind of end up giving in to that guilt and staying with it two boundaries or lines really right the other person thinks that you're okay with it the other person thinks it is okay to push you the other person thinks it is okay to grind you and to get work going and again because you have already been ground once because you've already been pushed once you feel it is okay it is just family na how does it matter it does matter it does matter you matter it is not okay to be taken for granted it is not okay to have someone's expectations go on increase go on increase and expectations in terms of demands from you it is not expectations of you being looking out for yourself of you staying healthy no it is expectation in terms of demands is it humanly possible please tell me now is it humanly possible for someone and i'm talking about I'm going to give an example of a woman right now because it's the easiest example to give an associate with right is it possible to have an ambitious uh corporate job and i mean ambitious where you are working and you are growing and your goal is to grow in the leadership uh, profile which means that you are working over time much more than what the 9 to 5 8 uh, hours of work entails and then is it possible for you to come home and be the master chef and prepare different kinds of food and then is it possible for you to spend time emotional bonding with both your children and your husband and then also is it possible to take the time to go to gym to maintain the figure and look good and have good skin and uh, look beautiful and look healthy and then is it also possible to have the energy and the agility to be intimate and to be romantic whenever the switch goes on how how you you tell me you do it for some time and then what if you don't put say no now and don't put your boundary now what happens to you and the third and the most important thing that i want to tell you is sometimes we end up selling ourselves we end up selling our soul we get caught up in a group of people we get up we get caught up in these attitudes and behaviors 
that don't resonate with us. We get caught up in people in a crowd, literally with attitudes and behaviors, which take us away from who we are. So what we're doing is selling our souls, selling our own emotions. And then you know what the worst part is? What we don't realize that over time we change as a person and we don't realize it. We end up becoming someone else. We end up evolving and becoming someone that we don't want to become. Someone that we don't have control over. So today, think about the times and the instances when you have been guilty of saying yes, when all you wanted to do was say no, and then think about why you did it. Think hard, and then think about how, where, you have got caught up in that cycle and loop like we discussed in the video. And the next time, if a situation arises where you are being guilted, think about why you're doing it. Are you doing it to avoid confrontation or conflict? Are you doing it to conform to a society and to get accepted? Or are you doing it for your upbringing value system and what the society tells us is what the definition of love and sacrifice and care and concern is. Do you agree with any of this bullshit? Do you think it's worth continuing to implement and listen to these principles when really what it's doing to you is changing who you are and taking you away from the person that you pride yourself at being? You pride yourself for being who you are, for your behaviors, for, for your attitudes, for your thoughts and for your emotions. Hold on to that. Don't compromise. Don't change who you are. Not for anyone. If someone truly loves you, if someone really likes you, if someone really wants you in their life, they will accept you the way you are. They will accept your nose. And when someone accepts your nose, that relationship is the relationship that's worth fighting for and worth having. Sayonara for now.